guys welcome back to the cockpit uh, in today's video we have no plan flying lines we're going to stop and get some fuel um, it's been about a year since i posted that um, my video about my check ride from hell my instrument check ride um, so if you haven't seen that video go back and check it out um, if you can believe it i'm still getting quite a bit of views on that and I'm getting a lot of comments still a lot of people are wondering what happened afterwards uh, with the dpe what happened with me let's go through the checklist real quick lights ignition switches are good instrument tie down Epidage was good, chalks are out, call plugs are good. They're in the back, fuel vent covers are good. Pitot tube cover is off, I know that. Uh, left wing tie down, flap, aileron, wing tip, did all that. Pitot tube was good, stall switch, fuel tank, fuel cap is on. Left main gear was good, fuel tank sump and tank vent was good. Uh, right wing now tie down, flap, aileron, wing tip, right main gear, fuel tank, and fuel cap is on, everything looks good out there. Fuel cap and tank vent. Fuel shawls, we did the prop. Power boost was good, landing light was working, four engine components were looking good, nose gear was good, engine oil, I checked that, windshield's clean, fill tank, and baggage door is for sure closed. Switches are where I want them for now, avionics, master, and circuit breaker panel, so check the circuit breaker panel, bring this on. Uh, safety belts, um, our shoulders harness it on. No circuit breakers, gear lever, we are clear, nothing can fall down there, we're good to go. Parking brake. Uh, we're not going to use it right now. I feel that I have pressure. Cow flaps are open. Parbo's fuel totalizer. Everything is good. Fuel totalizer. We have 25 gallons left. We're only going 10 minute flight. Cabin air is good. Uh, we'll do this actually. No, no passengers on board. Master press to test fuel quantity. So master is good. Press to test works. Fuel quantity indicators are where I expect them to be. We should be burning up the right tank and we are. Throttle correct. Mixture and beacon. We're ready for engine start. So beacon's on. Uh, throttle's cracked. We'll give it a little bit of juice here. One, two, fuel pressure stabilizes. Which is right about there. Clear prop. Look around. I don't see anyone. Here we go. <laughs> Missed it. One, two, three. That'll be it right there. Guaranteed. Avionics on all our databases are current. We're not flying IFR today. That looks good. Half deflection Okay, okay, okay. We'll go over here 119 or 57. We'll get our weather real quick while the engine is warming up Four knots visibility more than one zero Sky condition clear below one two thousand temperature two four Celsius dew point two one Celsius altimeter Two niner eight seven inches of mercury remarks density altitude one five zero zero wind two niner zero at three not three nine or zero at three we're all good to go um, boost pump mixture control boost uh, pump off it is off uh, mixtures where I want it on the ground throttle oil pressure fuel pressure gauge mixture stabilizer trim first check looks good to me. All right, warm up and taxi. Lights, avionics, master, and transponder. Squawk and 1200. Lights where I want them. Avionics, master's obviously on. We have our weather. We just set both altimeters. Sentry is on. Four flight is connected. We'll verify that. It's good to go. Autopilot will check that. So sinker heading, heading on. Autopilot should turn left. It does. Should turn right. It does. Disconnect should work. It does. And our electronic trim should work. And I'm feeling down here, and it does. Initial altitude bugged. Summer we're going to go up to 3,000 feet. Uh, parking brake, tow brakes, and gyro instruments. So parking brake, we're not using it, but it is off. Gyro instruments are working. We'll check the other ones while we're here. Everything's where I want it for now. All right, we're ready for run-up now. Let's do that right at the hangar, just in case anything is wrong. We can go ahead and put it right back. The engine oil is warm enough for this, so... Lean for max power. Fuel pressure came in. Everything's feeling really good. Brakes are holding. All right, we'll go two left. Should run rough and drop. And it does, we'll go two right. Should come back, it does. One left, should run rough and drop. It does, one right, comes back. A little more juice for the prop, I always say. We're only gonna do it one time today. Watch it, manifold pressure, RPM, and oil pressure. And I saw all three do what they're supposed to do. Prop comes back in, it comes back up. Bolts, amps, everything look good. That is a good run up. All right. Flight controls. We'll get 
We'll get taxiing here. Brakes are working, but we're going to test them anyway as soon as we get rolling just to make sure they're not locked up. Nothing's going to stick. They're not sticking. They're working. All right, we'll make a call here. Uh, Somerville traffic duty, 7 9 or 8 one, one at the rear hangers, taxi runway 24, Somerville. And, uh, we're on the on the back end of Hurricane Helene that came through. And so went through, hit Tampa pretty good. The but really, go back. It, it had so much momentum coming inland that it actually wrecked North Carolina and like Western North Carolina and um, all those areas worse with severe flooding. So we were fine. We did. We had some tornado sirens coming off. We had to take shelter for a little while at four in the morning the other night. I love the way these guys are talking. By the way, clear left, clear right. Nice. Um, I love the way that they're talking, the pattern and coordinating. Anyway, we we fared very well. Um, you know, we're, we're, we got lucky. Wife, kids, and I ruined. Marked safe from the hurricane, but I have friends that that their houses were were pretty destroyed. I mean, not destroyed, but damaged. I guess. Clear right, clear left. We're going Alpha on the right to two four. Windsock confirming that for us. Clear left, clear right again. Make another call, just 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 in case. Over real traffic, Moody seven nine eight one one on the ramp. Taxi runway two four. We're looking for that traffic. Real traffic, 401 Sierra Echo, downwind runway T4. They're downwind 24, so we'll keep an eye on for them. So here we go. We're down here waiting 24. We could blast off right now, but we're going to take our time, and if we don't get off before he comes in, no big deal. All right, so fuel selector handles where I want it right now. Check our fuel again. It's on the right tank. That's what I have here from our last flight, so we're good to go. Cow flaps are still open. Didn't touch them. Power boost. Seatbelts, door, retraction levers, good. Check our door, and we'll get the window in. Boom. Bug a button, we'll push that. Final flow, so pilot window, electronic fuel pump, landing lights. Traffic pull up here, echo, turning base. Beacon, nav light, landing lights, laps, mixture and prop. Everything else is good. Everything feels good. And we have plenty of time there on base, so we are going to go. And so we're going to traffic moody, 7, 9, or 8, 1, 1, taking off runway 24 will be a west northwest bound departure, Somerville. Yeah, he's turning base, but I don't see him, so he must be far out unless he's turning tight. Approaching right, runway 24. Right. Entered two runway 24. 4,900 feet remaining. Yeah, they're they're slow, so we got plenty of plenty of time. Alright, 24 confirmed. Traffic short final runway 24. Roll it on. Okay, four, it feels good. Vision speeds are on the green. The speed's alive. We're off. Got the brakes. Positive rate. Gears coming up. Gears up and long. Some really good performance today. Maybe not though. Alright, flaps coming up. Alright, we're gonna come back a little bit. No need for all this power right now. Not going with it. Somewhere real traffic. Moody 7 9 or 8 1 1 departing up the upland runway 2 4. We're right turn out to the northwest. Uh, some of them. Traffic 5 o'clock. Very North close. Traffic, traffic, 100 eight, feet below. These traffic alerts that I'm getting, it is bumpy up here. I expect that. Um, these traffic alerts that I'm getting are from myself. So, Alright, fuel pump, landing light come off. Everything else is good. Bring the power back just a little bit. Oh, found that smooth air. Right at, right at 1100 feet. Holy cow, glass smooth at 1100. Above 1100, rather. Wow. All right, everything's looking good, everything's feeling good. Really trimmed out here. Start looking at our engine. Perfect time for a checklist, what do you say? Climb checklist and route climb speed. We don't have it yet. We're only going to 3000, I'm gonna hand fly it up there. Um, I'm happy with our speed. Flaps are up. Some real traffic force here, echo tech, back, ramp. Top flaps are open. Fuel pump is off, landing light is off. The power boost is good. Good night, you that looks good. Sync our heading. Nav. IS and autopilot come on. Check my scoreboard. Everything's what I want. We'll get a little bit of better climb right here. And, uh, yeah. That's a, that's a good flying airplane right there. Short flight over to Bamberg. What is our time? Say 25 minutes now, but we're going really slow into the wind. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow it down even more, actually, as soon as we get up there. So, 3,000. All right. So, my check ride from Hell video. I posted a video about a year ago. It was about a, a check ride that I failed that um, was very unique. I'm not. I can't go over it all right now. 
So please go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it. But I was I was happy with the video. I think I think I articulated my feelings about the check ride well in that video. So go back and check that out. But just so this video stands alone, um, I had a very interesting and and uh, I'd say bad encounter with the DPE on a check ride. Um, there's a lot of a lot of things that went into this i had rushed into the check ride because i was trying to help s somebody um who could not get a check ride unless they had two check rides and um so a lot of details surrounding it that, that you'll need to go back and watch for but I had a really really bad experience so watch that video first but all right actually we're at cruise now so i'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna go through our checklist make sure it's good so we're gonna pull it way back this morning guys i mean 18 inches of manifold pressure, 2400. I know, I know some of you guys can tell, you can go below 2400. I like it at 24. Thing runs great at 24. 18. Autopilot's on. We're gonna really, really lean this out. Yep. We're gonna run below seven and a half gallons an hour. Hit our checklist real quick. Manifold pressure is good. That's where I want it, a little more. Mixture, happy with it. Temperatures are good, props good. Plots are definitely up. Coming off the rudder, I'm still on it for my climb. There we go. Power flaps are, oh, closed. See, we got one. Power boost, autopilot's on. Boost pump is off. Landing light is definitely off. Do a quick traffic check. We're good to go, guys. Um, quick, quick. Okay, so I got a lot of comments on that video, a lot of engagement on that video, and overwhelmingly, the, the comment that I got was, you know, why am I not reporting this DPE? Because in the end of that video, I, I told you guys that I was, I was not gonna report the DPE because I didn't want any retaliation. I felt she was pretty well connected this DPE in, in the community and I didn't want to make enemies, but I really felt uh, after thinking about it for some time that I was, um, you know, that it was my responsibility to, to at, least, at least report the DPE. Just share my experience. I didn't, uh, I didn't call for any action. And they basically said, you know, can you send us what happened, which I was smart enough after the check ride to go home and write like a transcript of everything that happened, all the detail, because it was so insane and so many different things happened it wasn't one thing it was like just a one thing after another that i was like i don't want to forget any of this so i went home and i, I typed it out i just opened up a word document and typed it out ended up being a page and a half of just like like police report style like fact uh uh writing and uh luckily i did that so i just copy pasted that and sent that to them and shared my experience i was i was i was open with them i said look i don't want I, i'm not out for vengeance i don't want that i'm just sharing my experience because I get the feeling that this is not the first person that this has happened to and I told them that because after I posted this video so many people reached out to me and said that they had the exact same experience and I didn't mention the DPE's name in the video didn't mention her name and I'd say no less than six people six to ten people at this point have reached out to me and said I know exactly who you're talking about it's this DPE and they, they said her name and was they were exactly right She's not even from here, she's from across the country. People from California were calling me saying that they had the exact same run-in with this DPE. Um, and they were either, you know, and they were the same boat I was. They were trying to work up and, and get jobs in the aviation community and things like that, and they were afraid of retaliation. Because if you knew this, this woman, you, you'd know what I'm talking about. But um, after thinking about it for some time, I decided, you know what, no, I'll call. And, and I did, and I shared that all these people were, were reaching out to me with the exact same experience. Now, that's not, that's not admissible in, you know, in court, I always say. It's not, that's not good um, evidence, but, you know, if I'm, if I'm the FISDO, I would want to know this. And I got the feeling on the phone, can't confirm this, but that they may have heard about this in the past. Uh, one person that reached out to me was, uh, they ran a flight school, and they, they said that they know they identified the DPE, and they mentioned that, um, yeah, we, we don't use that DPE anymore, we did report her, they didn't hear back. So, it's been a year, I've not heard anything back from the, the, the FISDO, but they told me straight up that I'm not going to hear back from them, they said, we're going to handle this, and to respect her privacy, we're, you know, we're going to do this internally. Now, the, the skeptic in me would say that they're all friends and nothing happened, that's one thing, or... You know, that, that is also what could have happened, They, you know, to respect someone's privacy. Maybe they just want to reach out to her and get her side of the story because it is just one side and it's just my side they're getting. And then, um, you know, 
take note of it and, and watch her in the future. I don't, I don't know how these things are handled, but regardless, I reported it. I told them not, I'm not expecting anything. I don't want retaliation. You know, I've since passed my, my check ride with flying colors and a few more since then. And uh, no, I, that, that was my, my feedback to them. So for everyone commenting on that video, I did report the DPE, uh, even though in the video I said I wasn't going to. And uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't get a lot of say, negative feedback. Obviously, it's the internet. You're always going to get uh, viewpoints from both sides. Overwhelmingly, the comments that I got were were I'll say supporting my my side and sympathetic, which I wasn't looking for either. But um, I was happy with the video, and I think that it, it went well. And I really hope hope that she either changed, or stopped doing this to people. Oh, that's something I'll tell you too. I found out that it was worse than what happened to me, that this, this DPE had a family member. I'm still trying hard not to identify this person because I, I just don't need to do that in this video, but the person had a family member, a very close family member, who was a flight instructor. He was running this thing where you had to go to this family member for instruction for her to like to, to, to be your DPE, which I guess is not, not a scam. but. Um, they were running this thing and they, you had to go to this person this person would charge you this amount of money and then she would charge you for the check ride and she I don't not, now I'm speculating right at, from, from this point on but I, I, I know at least from from two anecdotes that she and, and all the people that called me that she has a really high failure rate that she's failing people and then and then charging them half price to, to regal she charges you back then it was nine hundred dollars and then would charge you another four hundred and fifty dollars to retake the test ride or check ride. So thirteen hundred and fifty dollars she's getting out of out of these students. Um, so there, there was a lot of shady stuff going on that people were calling me, and I don't know how they even found me. By the way, I have an email that you can find me on, but people were finding my cell phone number online and calling me directly, leaving me voicemails saying, "Hey, I saw your video. I just wanted to share my experience with you." Um, so it was pretty wild. These people were obviously pretty, you know jaded or pretty affected by their experience with this DPE enough so that they felt the need to find me and and call me on my cell phone and, and, and share their experience so for those of you that did that I appreciate that it's vindicating for me maybe feel like I'm not crazy I'm not the only one that this happened to uh, but definitely a wild experience and for anyone wondering uh, immediately after that well I'd say th three, four weeks after that, I, I was scheduled with, a, with another DPE, and I passed my instrument check ride with flying colors. So I mean, it was uh, awesome. I, I was I was prepared to, as I was for the first one. I felt, and you know, I didn't have to look anything up. We just went through the curriculum, did it. I went and flew. Had one bad, not bad, but one thing that I wasn't happy with in my flight portion, but um, it was very minor, and I identified it. And if he wasn't even going to fail me for you, like, yeah, you're fine. So. I had a great instrument check ride. I've done my commercial check ride since then and my multi engine commercial since then. And all of those um, went very, very well. I didn't have any close calls, nothing like that. My multi engine commercial check ride was amazing. I had so much fun doing that. Uh, I flew a Baron. It was awesome. The DPE that, that I did it with, she told me she's. And I surprised myself on my steep turns, by the way. Like, I'm, I'm good at steep turns, but these ones that I did on my check ride were the best I've ever done in my life. They were locked in. I didn't lose 10 feet in either turn. It, I was blown away. And she's sitting there and she's like, those were the best steep turns I've ever seen anybody do in this airplane. And she has been doing it for like 30 years. So I, it was a huge compliment. Pat myself on the back for that one. It felt great. Um, but I, I did that check ride. And it was the first check ride I did on a plane that I didn't own. Uh, all my other check rides were in airplanes that I owned and were very familiar with. So I had to learn this airplane, uh, learn all new avionics, and uh, you know, I, I did great. I had to fly an instrument check or an instrument approach with one engine out in the foggles on on instruments that I was not familiar with, um, and it was great. I, I did I did wonderful. So uh, uh, it's uh, it's good because that's what I said I was going to do in that video. Um, I said I was going to forget about it. You know, she she's the only only person that I really had problems with, and all my other truck rides have been great. So um, it yeah, I, I put it behind me just making this video because. Number one, I have a YouTube channel where I share aviation, so I kind of feel a slight obligation to share these things, right? It's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sharing my aviation journey. That's why I shared that video in the first place. It was a big thing in my journey that, uh, you know, some people give me flack for uh, for sharing that, and I didn't understand that because, obviously, 
Um, that's that's what I do on this channel. I, I share aviation related content. Um, so that's that's just the way it goes. Let's uh, start getting ready to land here. So there's no weather at Bamberg, but we're gonna assume. I checked the weather earlier. The wind's going that away, so we're gonna land two three. Get a little sip of coffee here. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, go ahead and follow me on at uh, Tommy Flies a lot on Instagram. I put a ton of effort into my Instagram uh, like a month ago, month and a half ago. I was like, I made it a goal. I was like, let's just see what what I can do with my Instagram if I actually try. And I was at like 9,000 followers back then. And I put a ton of effort into this, like daily reels, good content. I was editing, do this. I got it up to 55,000 followers on Instagram. So, you know. Some people it doesn't matter too, but it was a goal that I set. I tried to do it and I did it. It was fun. I pulled way back now because I was on my phone all the time editing. It was like nauseating. Um, but I'm still posting daily or at least daily uh, stories and I put a lot of good good content on Instagram for you guys that it's much easier to do than YouTube. So go ahead and follow me on Tommy Flies a lot or at Tommy Flies a lot. I've also got a link in my description for uh, discount codes, things like that with for like flying eye sunglasses and, and some others. So you can check that out and save some money on some aviation related um, stuff. All right, the bugged 1100, we'll go ahead and start our descent down 500 feet a minute, get down to pattern altitude. We are 10 miles out now, so we'll go ahead and make a call. This is Bamberg, Bamberg traffic, duty 7, 9 or 8, 1, 1, 10 miles south, southeast, uh, inbound for left downward runway 23, full stop, Bamberg. All right, we're coming now within 10 miles of the airport, bring our landing light on. Uh, before landing checklist, fuel selector handles where I want it, electronic fuel pump, we're not going to use that yet. Make sure proper air speed's good, seat belts are on, flaps are where I want them, trims where I want it. We'll do a gumps check before we get down there. Mm -hmm. Bamberg traffic, moody, 7, 9, or 8, 1, 1, 4 miles, the eight. Then enter left down, then runway 2, tree, full stop, Bamberg. Alright, there's pattern altitude, up to 2.5 miles out, so perfect. Bamberg traffic duty, 79811, maneuvering into the left downwind runway 23, full stop, Bamberg. Alright, we're already leaving the numbers, we're below gear speed, here comes the gear. Down locked, pulled in, indicating. Power comes back, mixture pop, two pumps, switches are on, and belts are on. So gas on the tank I want, undercarriage is down here, and indicating. Whoa, it is bumpy down here. Mixture and prop are set, seat belts are on, we're going to land. Next notch here, I'm gonna slow it down. 500. And Bamberg traffic duty, 7, 9, or 8, 1, 1, turn final, runway 2, 3, full stop, Bamberg. 1 mile final, runway 2, 3. Notch of flaps, gas is good, under carriage is down. And if you're kidding, make sure proper set switch, so that seat belts are on. That's runway 2, 3, I can see it. Last gear check, let's land. So it's gonna be a little quick, but. Absolute greaser. All right, guys. I well, hope you guys enjoyed that little update. Quick little short flight over here to get some fuel. I'm going back up, and I'm going to enjoy this beautiful weather. If you guys liked it, don't forget to like it, subscribe, to follow me on Instagram. Tommy flies a lot. All that jazz. I'll catch you guys in the next one.